All right, today we're going to look at functions. Um, the two major things that we're going to look at today are defining a function and then calling the function. So we're going to have a function definition and a function call. A function is essentially a block of code that creates what's called abstraction. So it allows us to um, create it and then not have to worry about it, uh, how it works. Just know that it does work once we create it the first time. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, you can watch this video and it's going to go into how we define a function and then how we call a function and then uh, the naming of functions. I'm going to move on to activity three here. So if we look at this activity, um, it says call the second function to reveal the full image. So if I run this, I currently am drawing a background and I'm drawing a sun. Um, but that's it. So if you notice I have draw sky, that's a function that I'm calling, but I'm not calling draw balloons. So to call it, I just type in draw balloons. And I put an open close parenthesis because that's what it has. Um, inside the parentheses, you would have what are called parameters that you would then create variables and then pass parameters through there. So like ellipse has four parameters that it's taking. An x value, a y value, a width, and a height. Um, so when I reset and draw, it now will draw or will write this function. So the great thing is, is I can condense all of this code from line 11 to line 35. That's just one line of code now called draw balloons that can be inside my draw loop. So I don't have to have all of these things inside my draw loop. Next activity. Again, um, why do we do this? We're going to create functions to do something. So if you notice, we've got draw trees, draw background, and draw clouds, and then draw fence. So we have all these different functions, and we want to call them. Um, we want to call it in an order that makes sense. So probably want to draw the background first. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw trees. And then what else do I have? Draw clouds. And draw a fence. Let's see what we have here. Now, does this make sense? Should my cloud cover my tree? No, probably not. So I might move this, cut this from here, and paste it. And now my clouds are behind my trees. My trees are behind my fence. This looks pretty good for me. So if you, this is really condensed. And then you could really do this. You can create your own function. So you could go into functions here and you could pull one of these blocks in and you call it draw scene. And now instead of doing this, I could put all of these functions in function calls inside of this single function. And now I just type in draw scene. And what's it draw? It draws everything that's in draw scene, which then it draws the background. So it does this, and then it draws the clouds, and does this, and then draws the trees, and then the fences. So this is pretty common so that we can create this abstraction where we don't have to know you know really much of anything how it works we just do it once and then put it in a function and then call that function if we want to do it multiple times so let's look this says draw red so it does a fill then it creates a rectangle and then we have function draw green and then it draws green. So um, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to draw the red rectangle and then draw the green one on top of it. Um, so both squares will be drawn. Um, you can put functions anywhere in your code that you want. This is um, true with JavaScript. Other languages, that's not true. But with JavaScript, you can. Um, doesn't matter the order. If it doesn't recognize what the function is, it'll look for it um, 
in the code. So it either looks below or above to find that information. I typically put my functions down below my draw loop. Uh, that's just what I usually do. So it says um, call the function inside the draw loop so that the sprite appears on top of the background. So here's our draw sprites. We want to um, call trees background prior to drawing our sprite. So if, go, if you go into block mode, you see there's our function that we call and then we draw the sprites on top. So we can see that the sprite is now on top of that. So we don't have to, again, do all this background work, which is significant amount of work. We don't have to put that inside of our draw loop. It really kind of condenses what's in our draw loop, uh, which is really nice. Oh, uh, one note on that last one, do not create functions in the draw loop. So these functions are outside of the draw loop. The draw loop starts here and ends here. So just note that. Um, let's see. Code creates a sprite that moves across the screen once. How can you make it go back across the screen? Um, so we've got an if statement. If the flyer gets less than negative 50, so he's way over here, what do we want to happen? Well, we've done this before. We can just change his x velocity. We can say flyer dot velocity x now is a positive number. So let's just make it five. So he should come across. Oh wow, that's slow. Set flyer. So set flyer was a function that was called and it sets it to negative one. I'm gonna change that. Drive me nuts. So set flyer makes him negative five. There we go. Now I should go here and then ping back and go back to a five. And then he's gonna go off the screen and never return. So you could do another if statement inside of there. Say if it's greater than 400, have him come back. Oh, here we go. Use the if statement and the function written for you to make this sprite move across the screen multiple times. So, we do another if statement. Um, so like you could do an else if. And say else if flyer dot x is greater than 400, you could then flyer dot velocity x is now negative 5. There you go. And if you don't like this, you can make it to 450, and then it'll kind of go off the screen. Cool. Make changes to the set flyer function so it starts at a random y location. So now instead of right here, so this is my set flyer function which is called right here, which is kind of initialization. You're initializing the features of the flyer. So I could set the flyer y value to a random number between 0 and 400. Again, I could have pulled the random number function into there. Um, I like typing things. To me, it helps me focus a little bit better on that. So now it's set it up there. If I do it again, it's down there. So now he randomly is located places. So it moves at random every time he's reset. Perfect. Uh, draws a daytime scene or a nighttime scene depending on the location of the mouse. The draw loop describes what needs to happen, but one of the functions hasn't been written yet. So if we look, here's our draw function. If the world.mouseY is greater than 200, it draws day. Otherwise, it draws night. So right now, it just draws the day. If it's up here, see it stops, it freezes. So it constantly draws day. So you get these, this, you go up here, it doesn't do anything. So, how can we draw night? Well, the night scene is very similar to this day scene. So I'm just going to copy and paste the day scene. Uh, let me do this. Let's 
copy that. We go up here to my night, paste it there. Now my sky, I'm just going to darken everything. So instead of this being 200, I'm going to make it 100. Make this one, um, what, 125 roughly? No, let's look. There we go. Day, night, day, night. Now I'm going to darken up everything else. So the water, um, instead of 150, I'm going to make it 75. So it should be a darker water now. And then I'm going to change my sun to be a moon. And I'm going to make it uh, like 150, 150, 150. So it's a moon, but it's not super bright. Uh, that looks a little too dark. So we'll make this uh, 200. There we go. There's my moon. If you want a brighter white moon, you can always bump it up to 255 if you wanted to. And then I'll be super white. And there you go. Day, night, day, night. And if you notice, you can see the little reflections actually go white as well. They're the same color as the moon. See the reflection here? It still has that fill color that was in this spot. So there you go. Daytime scene, nighttime scene. Okay, so we want to write the code for set coin to make the coin fall from the sky. And here we go, let's run it. So the coin isn't moving. Uh, we can move our rabbit back and forth. So we want to have the coin fall. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do that with our set coin. Uh, the easiest way is to probably um, give it a velocity. So we're going to give it a sprite.velocity y. So it's a coin, so it's coin.velocity y, and we'll give it a positive value so it starts moving down the screen. And there it goes. Now when it touches the rabbit, what should happen? So we don't have that uh, is touching set up yet. We do have if it's greater than 400. So if we reset and we move the rabbit, so if it's greater than 400, what should it do? Well, it should come back to the top. So that's right here is it says set coin so if it's greater than 400 it should set the coin so we should also change the coin dot y back to let's make it negative 50 so it's off the screen and let's do the coin dot x as a random number between 0 and 400 so now it randomly places our coin Look at that. So it's over here. And there it comes there. Now why is my bunny moving the whole time? So I don't know why my my rabbit is moving. That was weird. Now it's not moving. That was... that was super weird. Okay, that's pretty good. Randomly puts it in a spot. Let's move on. Now we want to do an if statement is touching. We can randomly change the velocity of the coin. So right here, instead of being four all the time, we can make it a random number. Let's look at the next one. Um, to draw the backgrounds, so we could do a simple background or a silly background. When you catch 10 coins, so that's another option we have. And that's pretty much it, that's a review. But we can put all these things in functions, so really, um, like the bunny controls, we can put that in a function. We can put um, 
you know, reset coin, our set coin is a function. So we have these different things we can do.